Our next speaker for today, we have Meera Rao, Senior Director of Product Management from Synopsys Inc. Software Integrity Group. Meera Rao is a Senior Director of Product Management within the Synopsys Software Integrity Group. She has over 20 plus years of experience in software development organizations and has overseen and performed secure code reviews, static analysis implementations, architectural risk analysis, secure design reviews, and threat models of systems built from a few thousand lines of code to systems containing tens of millions of lines of code. She has developed multiple synopsis training courses and is a certified instructor in architectural risk analysis, threat modeling, and more. The topic for today is building security in DevOps with intelligent orchestration, TBC. Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hope you're enjoying the conference. Uh, DevOps, or even if you may call it as DevSecOps, has been a hot topic in the recent years. Uh, so today, I'm going to talk to you about how to build security in your DevOps with intelligent orchestration. Um, so my name is Meera Rao. Uh, been working with Synopsys for 14 years now. I have been in the US for uh, 21 years. Um, so you are seeing a picture of myself uh, in a sari. Yeah, that is because I was born in Mysore, which is very close to Bangalore. Uh, and then um, a lot of, lot of Indian tradition that I follow. Uh, so again, the goal was to make sure that um, uh, I represent both the US, like if you're seeing me now on the, on the, in the conference, yeah, I'm uh, in the US, but then a lot of my background is uh, traditions and everything comes from being an Indian. So you can follow me on Twitter uh, or LinkedIn or email me anytime if you have any questions. So I have been focusing um, at least in the past like 14 years on working with several customers, helping them with uh, DevOps solutions, right? Working with them as a trusted advisor uh, for achieving realistic goals for building either CICD or uh, DevSecOps. So let's go through uh, what are some of the challenges that we are seeing in the industry. Even like two, two weeks back, we found that Microsoft discovered a critical vulnerability in solar winds, right? It was a malicious code um, on machines hosting like server products. So every single day, we hear so many challenges about uh, application security, right? Things that were uh, companies that were hacked, people that are getting hacked, a lot of challenges, right? So one of the key things that we see within Synopsys is, or what we ask, or what I ask when I am doing any engagements with my customers is what keeps you up at night that's a very very popular question right for any any engagement that you're doing or anyone you're working with when you meet them and they are facing certain challenges that's what we ask and this view that you're seeing here on this slide is what we think when based on uh, engagements that we have with our customers, with the way uh, we perform those engagements, the challenges that we see is, um, and, and what keeps them up at night is, again, you can group them into three verticals, right? Like when you talk to the software security, uh, security people across the industry, one of the key things or challenges for them is to make sure that their software is secure. Why, right? That is the question. Why does my software need to be secure is because again, you're seeing there software security um, is the number one attack surface for all the cyber criminals, right? 
when you talk to the development leads when you talk to the chief technology officer or a or just a developer one of the key challenges they have is to make sure that they must uh, write secure code and they still need to maintain the the speed of the development right so when you give them tools and technologies that make them do more work the developers will just flat out reject all the tools and then those processes will slow them down and then when you talk to the c level executives like the business team uh, one of the key challenges is how do we even know whether an application is secure to be deployed to production right because we use so many uh, tools so many technologies so many security activities and there is no one place that i can find the business risk or the technical risk which i can attach to my business risk because it's buried in the sea of findings across so many dashboards right so the business teams uh, are overwhelmed by all of these and then when they are overwhelmed we are not helping anyone in in the organization right so in order to address this so in order for the security team for the development teams for the business to succeed what do we need to do as security professionals in the industry right first is we need to acknowledge that there is a challenge um, because if you cannot just ignore those challenges and then you need to look across each and every teams who are striving to build secure software and understand what do we need to do in order to help them so if you look at developers one of the key thing is we need to make sure that we empower the developers to build secure and high quality software right so in order to do that we need to make sure that we provide them like accurate results we provide them results that truly matter for them not the thousands of issues that a tool finds right we need to provide them remediation advice which is focused on the technology and the language that they are using not just generic remediation go fix sql injection isn't going to work right and then for the devops team who are building all these ci cd or devsecops pipeline as you may call we need to make sure that we provide them a value that the tools and the technologies that we are bringing in for automation are run at the right time at the right depth and are able to not run at all if it's not required so that we don't overload either the devops team we don't overload the servers we don't overload the cloud environment that we are using by just running the scans over and over and over again and then when it comes to the security teams one of the key here is to make sure that we get those prioritized results so they are able to go to one dashboard and triage all the results right rather than asking the security teams go to 10 different dashboards triage all the results we can have one dashboard where they can triage all the results we can bring in all of the policies that they have right whether it's the security team the compliance team the auditing team the policies that are there in an organization and make sure that we are able to enforce them right so these are some of the things that we as security professionals need to address in order to uh, help them deploy like the way they choose to right so because if you slow down your deployment then your competition whoever it is may have all of the benefits in the world right so when you look at this one effective application security what we are saying is it's not about about installing tools and running them right just convincing your development team or the develop devops team and telling them hey we acquired all these tools you just run them isn't going to work right because tool alone is not going to 
solve any problem so you need to bring in your people make sure that your people are aligned you need to bring in all the processes that you have and then then you need to bring in the technology to make sure that you are able to help your people and implement all of those processes at different stages in your sdlc at different stages you are performing different activities you are performing different automated activities you are performing different manual activities so we need to make sure that we bring together all of them together and that is exactly what happens with intelligent orchestration right so in order to bridge this gap between the devops team the security team uh, your development team and then also all of the other um, uh, entities that are required within your organization intelligent orchestration enables all of those teams it is able to provide that continuous feedback it's able to provide that continuous metrics it's able to provide that continuous automation no matter what compliance requirements you have no matter what policy requirements you have no matter what uh, governance requirements you have it's able to automatically perform the right security test at the right time at the right depth and provide that feedback to the right people so that's what we are going to spend the next like around 20 minutes looking at right so what are some of the key features of intelligent orchestration the first one that you see there is it manages policy enforcement what do i mean by that right so simple example that we have seen across all customers that we have worked is every major release there needs to be a major a manual penetration test right so this is there somewhere in your pdf for a word document or in your confluence how do we enforce that right so someone keeps sending an email saying okay it's 90 days you need to do a manual penetration test isn't going to work in 2021 right so the goal here is to bring all your policies into intelligent orchestration and it will enforce that so if you say every major release there needs to be a manual penetration test every major code change that the developer or the development team introduces right like maybe they introduced a new control they introduced a new attack surface we need to perform a manual code review and update our threat model bring in that policy right so we will be able to enforce that we have compliance requirements that every 3 months there needs to be a full static analysis scan without any rules that are configured no matter what the, the entire rules need to be enabled we need to perform a static analysis intelligent orchestration will be able to enforce that the next thing below that you are seeing is tool agnostic so intelligent orchestration works with any security tool right so it might be synopsis tools it might be commercial tools it might be open source tools it truly doesn't care what tool is uh, in your pipeline if you say run static analysis then whatever you have configured it will be able to run that particular static analysis tool or software composition or dynamic analysis or trigger manual activities right it ensures the right tests are run at the right time what do we mean by that take for example um i i always give this example uh we all have like very um like maybe the 21st century dishwasher right so what do i mean by that the dishwasher has like almost like 30 40 settings uh and it has a upper rack it has a lower rack so say for example i i got pizza today um, um and then uh, i did not cook anything so i used two plates two glasses for for pizza right in in my family will i load the entire dishwasher and run it for like one and a half hours no i will wash it by hand right those two plates and two glasses so maybe tomorrow i prepare a detailed like indian food 
right uh, and then i have lots of dishes i have lots of uh, pans and everything else i load the dishwasher and say finish it in 30 minutes right and maybe over the weekend i had a party at my home lot of people came i had lot of dishes lot of grease and everything else i put the dishwasher and say do a deep clean uh, um um uh, dishwashing right same thing with our applications when we haven't checked in anything like maybe we checked in a javascript file with some changes in the font maybe some label or something why do i need to run all the tools that are configured in my pipeline i don't right so you should be able to skip all of that and say whatever is your, the stage in your uh, organization continuous delivery continuous deployment you should be able to go there right maybe you checked in minor changes for your source files not very comprehensive minor changes so you may have to run static analysis maybe you made some changes for your um, uh, open source maybe you need to run software composition analysis that is it but then your code needs to go uh, fast whereas if you made changed major changes like you changed authentication api authorization api you included a new framework maybe spring security you included some changes for your uh, uh, cryptography this is a major change so not only do you need to run all of the activities in your pipeline static analysis software composition analysis dynamic analysis maybe you are using containers container scan but since you did comprehensive changes you also maybe need to do a manual code review and then maybe update your threat model right so this is a comprehensive change so you need lot of activities that need to happen right so ensures the right tests are run at the right time is what it is about and then we are saying manage issue prioritization and filtering right like again this one goes hand in hand with delivers the right information to the right teams so the tools find lot of issues are you going to push all these issues to your developers no we don't want to do that we want to make sure that we prioritize the risk that the developers are able to be given we filter those we prioritize and tell them yeah the tool found 300 400 500 issues but it only has five critical maybe 10 high so we are only going to assign you those 5 and 10 and then make sure that you fix those issues right and then last but not the least is automates the workflow for all manual activities what do we mean by that i gave you an example right so when there are comprehensive changes you need to do manual code review you need to do a manual penetration test you need to do a a uh, threat model right maybe you have compliance requirements the example i gave you earlier so for all of those if you tell us what are those requirements we bring in those as policies into intelligent orchestration and are able to enforce them so how does that policy as code work right so we ask some basic questions what is the change significance right so we connect to your git repository whatever github gitlab bitbucket and understand who checked in the change what did what did they check in and how much code was changed and we also connect to your defect tracking whatever jira azure devops gitlab to understand how many open vulnerabilities do you have how many of them are critical how many are high how many are medium and low right so you can provide a weightage for those and then we take the the business risk of the application itself right because not all applications built in an organization are critical if it is externally facing yeah you you have uh, the business criticality as high if it is uh, using some uh, uh, a sensitive data classification right and then we 
we get all those attributes based off of your application we come up with a total weighted score and then you tell us what activities do we want to do for policy as code right so i have very few examples here static analysis scr is source code review manual uh, software composition analysis pen testing dynamic testing image scan bring in other activities if you want if you are doing network testing if you are doing cloud configuration reviews so all of these are completely configurable right so what activities do you want to run based on the score how do you want to run them parallel in a separate pipeline in line with your pipeline trigger and forget all kinds of deployment models are um, um available right so you can decide and then also it looks at the scan thresholds every 10 days no matter what we need to run this every 20 days we need to run this so that will override those and come up with a prescription based off of that prescription you can customize if the risk score is high you are looking here a policy example run all the activities right manual as well as automated that is what you're seeing and that is what the pipeline does right so you're going to use whatever ci you have the example i'm showing is using jenkins but you may have jenkins you may have gitlab ci you have you may be using github actions circle ci again it's agnostic you may be deploying it in the cloud but then it will say okay based off of the policy based off of the risk score based off of your uh, a business unit this is what you asked us to do so we are going to run all the scans and manual activities right and then when like i said you may have changed just some minor static analysis code you may have changed one or two uh, like uh, image files or what not if the risk score is medium and you asked us to do static analysis software composition analysis and image scan then intelligent orchestration at the very first stage that you see in the pipeline io prescription io is a short form for intelligent orchestration it comes up with this prescription and says hey i looked at all of the uh, code change significance open vulnerabilities i came up with the score this is what you need to run right and then the pipeline runs those and then when this risk score is low right maybe you changed a properties file you changed a, a policy as code file for that specific project you change some other configuration files which had no uh, major significance then it says okay you asked me not to run anything i also saw that the changes were not too um, uh, critical so i skipped all of the activities and then i am allowing you to go to the next phase in the pipeline right so that's what happening here so customized policy as code and then i talked about being tool agnostic right like most of the customers when i say tool agnostic they're like does it only work with synopsis tools no it works with synopsis tools open source tools commercial tools right you bring in the tools that you are using for your application security we'll be able to use that so here is an example of all open source tools except for aqua which we are using for image scanning so spot bugs owasp dependency check owasp zap all are open source and then again if you are using a different language in this go so there is go sec go dependency check owasp zap and then again aqua and then again if you want synopsis tools all synopsis tools then yes we have here coverity black duck seeker it also supports tin foil it also supports code dx which we recently acquired which you will see uh, in 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 the next few slides right and then like i mentioned it also triggers all the ma manual activities you tell us when do you want us to trigger those activities what needs to happen right so in the demo environment that we have within synopsis what we show is pausing the pipeline but if in your organization we have to create a jira ticket it's able to create a jira ticket if it, you have to send an email to someone slack notification you tell us what the policy is intelligent orchestration will be able to enforce that so here it's showing manual code review threat modeling and penetration test right so it is able to 
trigger your manual activities also and then you see here any stage right you can say if the uh, if the dynamic testing or interactive testing that i did had lot of vulnerabilities like cross site scripting or sql injection i want to validate those with a manual penetration test then yeah we can do that right so that's what you're seeing here and then i talked about delivers the right information to the right teams so again there is support for github actions gitlab ci bitbucket pipes so when your developers does does a push or a merge request in their git repositories we will run the appropriate scan again we will not run all the activities that are configured we will run the appropriate scan and the appropriate results are sent to the developers you may say i only want to see sql injection critical i want to see sql injection critical as well as cross site scripting so only those results will be delivered to your developers right but again the tool still has all the results so if you're using black duck black duck hub has all the results but immediately the developers will be notified about only the ones that they truly care about and the ones for which there is detailed remediation guidance right because we don't want to overwhelm them with all the issues that the tool finds and then again like i said if you want them to be notified through slack channel we can do the same thing right so you let them know that hey we were running software composition analysis these were the uh, the criteria that you set to be notified we found those we are notifying you same thing with static analysis right so delivers the right information to the right teams so doesn't mean that it only delivers the information to the developers it also is able to deliver the right information to the sign off authority maybe you have someone in your organization who needs to sign off when critical or high vulnerabilities are found then it will also be able to notify those people again like i said earlier we pause the pipeline but then in real world whatever is your uh, governance requirements we will be able to satisfy those right but then like i said in in the last month we acquired code dx code dx is one um, tool uh, application vulnerability management dashboard which is able to normalize correlate prioritize and provide that reporting for all your appsec tools right again just like intelligent orchestration it's completely tool agnostic so it works with synopsis tools commercial tools as well as open source tools so it's able to correlate the results it's able to track the remediation it has two way connections to your defect tracking and now you can centrally look at the risk of your application for your entire portfolio in your organization right so intelligent orchestration when i say delivers the right information is also able to talk to code dx through the extensive apis that code dx has look at the consolidated results right here it says this application has an f grade because the score is very very bad and it's able to pause the pipeline to notify someone and say hey what do you want me to do go to the next stage in the pipeline or break the build right uh, whatever the policy is so it's able to get the results from code dx and then enforce that in the pipeline right so that is where you're seeing all of these security sign off uh, so with all the things that i talked about so a top down approach how do we say that intelligent orchestration along with code dx will help you achieve true devsecops right bring in all your appsec strategy programs that you have bring in all of the policies that you have bring in all of the governance and compliance requirements that you have intelligent orchestration will take that as policy as code and based off of your devsecops pipeline it's able to trigger both automated and manual activities and then the results are now fed to code dx which is able to normalize 
deduplicate, correlate, and then those results can go to your defect tracking. And then you have a consolidated risk uh, for, for all of your applications. And from those tickets that are created in your defect tracking, your developers have those prioritized findings and remediation. And as soon as they are able to get those, they check in, they fix those check in. And then again, based off your policy, this whole thing continues, right? So it truly works with your policies, governance, compliance requirements you have, auditing requirements you have, and all of the information that you provide us, right? This is what needs to happen. These activities need to run at this time. These people need to be notified. This is how they need to be notified. Bring it in and we are able to use that. So with intelligent orchestration and code DX, everything you can manage as code. No more saying, I have a Word document here, I have a PDF here, I have a Confluence page here, nothing, right? So your application security or AppSec doesn't have to come at the cost of velocity. You decide what the velocity is, you define the rules, and intelligent orchestration will do the rest of the activities, right? Enforcing them, notifying them, collecting the metrics, uh, and also you can include key checkpoints like gates at various phases in the pipeline, right? So you are now able to go at a higher speed, you are able to lower the cost because you are not running the tools and all the manual activities just because you need to do them. You have reduced friction across your organization. You saw how we are able to provide that continuous feedback, not just for the developers, for your entire organization. And we are able to maintain that compliance requirements that you have, right? Everything as code. Right. So again, there are a lot of links, useful links available for you in um, the Synopsis blog, many of which I have written. Uh, so please go take a look at that. There are a lot of videos, demo videos. Uh, and if you need anything more, like I said earlier, please don't hesitate to reach out to me or in general Synopsis. Thank you very much. I hope you have a wonderful conference and then hope to see you all next year uh, personally in Bangalore. Take care. Bye.